Hey, welcome to my show. And what we have here on our healing bench, test bench, is a Honeywell Vaporstat, uh, 16 ounces. Uh, and it is the later one without the mercury. Uh, the model number is... And you can read that L four zero eight J is in Juliet one zero zero nine, and it has a date code of fifteen o two, which I think is going to be year fifteen twenty fifteen. So it's less than uh, ten years old. Pulled it off a system that uh, was not working. In that uh, this didn't control the pressure, so. Let's set it up, and you'll see what I mean. Get this cover off of here. There we go. There we go. And we're going to set up a light. And we're going to put this under the, on the B terminal here. And I'm going to hook up this end to 24 volts. And we're going to hook up the R terminal to the other end of the 24 volts. We're going to turn on the power. Turn out the light there. I think we can see it a little bit better. And there we are. Okay. So, our squeeze ball. And... So you can see the pressure there it goes, uh, the inner dial is zero to three. You can see that. Uh, and we'll see if we can hear that thunk. But the light is still lit, even after three pounds. So that's not good. Now, I think you can see this mechanism here if we, we watch it rise up. And if you look in the back, towards the back of the mechanism there, I think you can see it trying to operate that little cam back there. And the light is still on. So in other words, the boiler would still be firing. Let me... But this is the um, sub-assembly for the micro-switch. There are two terminals, R to B, uh, red to blue for BTU. And here is the cam in the back. And that's the movement that is necessary to get that to turn on and off. And so these sub-assemblies um, with the micro switch are the same throughout. This is a... Um, L404F, 1367, same sub-assembly. Uh, major difference is the spring. Uh, it's kind of yellowish, and you can see this main spring there is red, and the um, diaphragm is much, much larger on the vapor stat. And, of course, the scale uh, to here goes up to 8 pounds. Here's a close-up of the uh, diaphragm of this smaller unit. You can see there's a difference. What was happening a couple of years ago was uh, this wasn't being sealed properly on a couple of units, and what would happen is uh, water would fill this chamber and uh, cause this to fail and pucker. There's a, this is a welding process here. So let's let me see if we can uh, trip that manually. Uh, where did my... Yeah. There we go. Let's see if we can trip this manually and make that light go off. Yeah. So, what... I don't know what the, what, what the failure mode of this was. But... Uh, Presumably, it was working when it left the factory, but that might be a big presumption. 
But this is the access that uh, allows us to gain access to the screw through there. And so I'm going to take that off. Uh, don't try to stop me. I'm going to do it. There we go. And there that little. And let's see if we can see that screw in the back there. So I'm going to move. The, I'm going to advance the screw uh, forward a little bit. And unfortunately, I am. I don't think anything can fit in there. So we're going to probably have to stop this video until I find a uh, screwdriver that will actually fit in there. Okay, we're back. I found my little screwdriver. And we're going to go back in there and see if we can I'm going to give it one turn. And see if that brings us back into operating control. There's our light. Oh, all right. So one tiny little turn. do a little bit more just a little bit more just to air that's it and we'll see if that works and we're not watching the uh So I've got the differential is subtractive, and so I've got it close to 8, and I've got the main shutoff at 8. So better than what it was. I'm not going to say it's 100% accurate. Certainly Maybe just a touch more. Okay. And we're going to try again. All right. All right. And just in case we have a Problem in resetting. Let's change the differential to six. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, a unit that's repaired. I wouldn't put this back on a system just by itself. Uh, unless you had backup, which would be one of the um, controls with a resettable button. I should have it. Where is it? It's over here somewhere. <laughs> um, lost track of it. Give me a minute. One moment, please. And we're back. Yeah, this is the one with the manual reset. There's your cover, push to for reset there, and we're looking at a L4079 Bees and Baker 1033, and you only have two contacts, and I would turn this down that low. Let's just see where that uh, takes us. Bear with me for a minute here. Let's get this set up for a 
There we are. Off that comes. I have other videos, earlier videos I've made years ago with this guy. There's your adjuster uh, cover. And we'll go ahead and set this up. Bear with me, folks. I really appreciate your patience. I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, put them below. I hope we can uh, answer them for you. And... Remember to like and subscribe. All right, so I've got that turned down pretty low. And we're going to put the squeeze on there. Whoops. Did I turn that off? Here we are. Sorry about that. Had that off. All right, so we never, we didn't get it to trip. Ah! All right, so a trip to two and a half pounds, and you see the pressure will drop, um, and the unit will not automatically reset. You have to push this button here to get it to reset. We'll try that again. Let's turn this down lower. All right, see our lights come back on. Let's bottom that out all the way to the bottom. Let's see what happens. Two pounds. So even though that's all the way, way below two pounds, we're at the bottom of the scale. It's tripped out at two pounds. Um, so if you have a vapor system, uh, two pipe system, you probably want to bottom this pretty low. Uh, so just in case your uh, vapor stat uh, decides not to work anymore, um, you won't have um, extreme water hammer and water squirting out events and so forth. Again, Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next one.